everybody, welcome to Simple Hobby Homesteading. I am Jenna, and today joining me in the kitchen, you can probably hear his pitter patter, is Buddy, our golden retriever. I don't know if he'll come say hi or not. Um, Buddy, you want to come say hi? He's slowly making his way over. Oh, Buddy, oh, he's he's laying down. Ow, oh, there he is. I don't can you see him? Buddy, come back here. Say hi. <gasps> yeah, there's your head. Yes, hi. There we go. There's his head right there. He says hi. Okay, now you can go lay down. Good job. All right, and he might just pitter-patter right down here below me. That's fine. Today, we are going to make healing salve. Now, healing salve is a lot like Neosporin, except it's better. It's all natural, and we use uh, the majority of the ingredients come right here off of our homestead. So that's another reason I absolutely love it. No running to CVS, no running to Walgreens or Walmart or whatever to get Neosporin. I can just make it right here on the farm with stuff that we grow and we can gather uh, here on the farm. So some of the ingredients I'm gonna go through first, um, we had our olive oil and coconut oil um, infusing with herbs and plants for the last 24 hours. And I put it in a crock pot um, on warm and I let it sit for 24 hours. You can also use a double boiler and, and infuse it that way for an hour or two on the stovetop. I just don't like to babysit it on the stovetop, and so I put ours in a crock pot on warm for 24 hours. So the in here we have um, equal parts coconut oil and olive oil. For the recipe today, we're going to use one cup of oil, so it's going to be a half a cup of coconut oil and a half a cup of olive oil. It's already mixed together in there, and we're going to strain it into our jar here. Um, if you want to make bigger batches, you just multiply it you do the bath. It, it'll be okay. So in here, the herbs that are infusing into this olive oil, coconut oil mixture are lavender buds. I put in a third of a cup of lavender buds and we grow lavender here on the homestead, but we also uh, order bulk lavender buds. And lavender buds just kind of look like little mouse turds. That's what they always remind me of. Uh, when I have a bath and I have a bath bob in there with um, lavender buds, I totally, after the bath, think, oh my goodness, it just looks like little mouse turds all over in my bathtub. It's a pain in the butt, <laughs> but it's, it's wonderful. I love lavender. So and lavender has some great healing properties. So that's one reason why we infuse lavender in this oil mixture. And we also put lavender essential oil in the finished product um, of the, the healing salve. The other thing that is infusing in here is plantain. Now, there are two kinds of plantain and they grow everywhere. It's a weed, but it's a wonderful, wonderful plant. It's considered a weed, I should say, but it's absolutely magical and wonderful. Wonderful healing properties and antibacterial properties. There are two kinds of plantain. There's broadleaf plantain, and you can see here's the seed stalks on that. But you'll see this, if you know what this is, you'll see it, or actually, I'm going to tell you what it is. Uh, you'll see this all around now, and I'm going to get close to the camera with it. This broad leaf plantain, it's like that, and it's got these seed spires, and it grows very low to the ground, and it is absolutely wonderful. So there's broad leaf plantain, and that is, like I said, everywhere. So you just want to wash that and dry it, and then you can infuse it into your oils. Then there is narrow leaf plantain, and I even found some with a little flower on it right here. Look at that. I'll bring it closer so you guys can see. And they both have the same properties. And this was just picked um, just a few hours ago outside. You can see some bugs got to it too. Uh, so it's starting to wilt a little bit, but we just, um, we chop the roots off and then we lay it out on our drying racks and we dry it and then we bag it up. And so we can use it in things like this in our crock pot, which is so wonderful. So we have narrow leaf and broad leaf plantain. And those we just gather from around the homestead, we dry, and then we bag up like this, and then we can use it in all sorts of different things like soaps, oil infusions, so on and so forth. All right, next we have comfrey. And comfrey, is, if you don't grow comfrey, you need to. If you have any kind of space at all uh, on your homestead, or it doesn't grow well in containers, but backyard or anything like that, you want to grow comfrey. And I'll bring the, the leaf close for you. Comfrey is like a fuzzy leaf. Look at that, super neat leaf. And it's kind of 
fuzzy. It's got like almost hairs on it. Uh, but this dries really, really well. And then you can just uh, crush it up. Here's the flower that comes off of the comfrey and hummingbirds and well not so much hummingbirds but bees and butterflies love the comfrey flower and why is it that all perennial flowers summer flowers seem to be either purple or pink uh i'm not sure but we have a couple really great comfrey plants growing here on the homestead that give us all the comfrey that we need and where's my oh so comfrey leaf uh once it's dried it just looks like any kind of mint or anything like that let me show you up close we're getting lots of up close stuff today. Yeah, it just looks like mint or like a dried herb, a dried green herb. And we just have bags and bags of it downstairs with my soap stuff, but I also keep these little jars uh, up here in the kitchen for you know any little, little things I need to do with our herbs. So the other thing that's in this infusion is German chamomile. So once again, I'll show you. We grow German chamomile here on the farm, which I love. Look at that, little flower buds. And chamomile has a really nice soothing property, so we want to get that infused. A lot of people drink chamomile tea, which is really nice. So look at that. All right, so we've got chamomile, 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 chamomile. The other thing we use is comfrey root. So the comfrey plant, we do, um, every once in a while, we dig up some of the comfrey plants if we need to split them or if we need to gather the root and we actually make a powder out of the comfrey root. You can also order this if you don't want to dig up your comfrey plants. But they spread a lot and you can split them and you can use the root as well. And so we have the comfrey root in this infusion as well. So that is it. We, oh, I'm sorry, no, calendula. We have calendula, which is uh, another name for pot marigold. Not pot, it's marigold. It's called, the old school name is called pot marigold. But it's in the marigold family, and it is a marigold. And I've, I've showed you our calendula on different videos. So go back and look at our garden videos, and you'll see where we grow our calendula in the garden. And I just go gather uh, several of the flowers every three days, a bunch of flowers, dry them, and then we've got calendula. Look at that. Calendula has just, once again, amazing soothing properties, antibacterial, just wonderful, wonderful properties to this calendula. Uh, so we definitely want to make sure this was in the infusion. So those are the things in the infusion, and I will give it a stir and show you guys an up close and personal of what it looks like. Look at that. It has been infusing for 24 hours and it looks so good. So we're gonna start straining some out because we don't wanna put the herbs in the salve. That would be a little abrasive. And so we're gonna start straining it out and then we can add our beeswax. So we are going to add to this recipe we are going to add, um, like kind of after the fact, uh, we're gonna add beeswax. And I order the beeswax in these little pastels or pastules, pastilles, however you say it, pastilles, uh, because they melt down really easy. And let me show you what these are. And they just take beeswax and they put it in these little, some kind of mold or something, but it's 100% beeswax, but they're itty bitty little things. See, look at that, itty bitty little things. And so they melt down super quick and super easy. So for every cup of oil, every one cup of our infused oil, you're gonna use four tablespoons of beeswax. And this gets really good amount. Uh, four tablespoons of beeswax. And we're also going to add honey. Honey, of course, everybody knows has antibacterial properties. I get my honey from uh, the Mediterranean. And I love it over there. And so uh, one tablespoon of honey for this recipe per one cup of oil. I'm actually going to put this back on for a minute so it stays nice and warm and it will melt our uh, beeswax. And then also we add neem oil. Now you don't have to add neem oil. You can order this from anywhere, Amazon. Uh, this is Dr. Adorable Inc. We love their uh, neem oil. Neem oil is antimicrobial, antibacterial, antifungal, antiviral. Uh, it will kill any bad bug. It will kill any infection. Uh, but it smells nasty. It smells nasty. It smells pretty horrible. So, though we love it, we don't want our uh, healing salve to smell so bad that if we put it on, 
no one can come around us for 500 feet. So we're only going to use a smidge of this neem oil. And a smidge for this recipe would be like a one quarter to one half teaspoon. Uh, if you don't mind the smell of it so bad, go ahead and use a half a teaspoon. Uh, if you're not a fan of the smell, I'd say stick to a, a quarter of a teaspoon, a little smidge, just a little douse you'll see as we put it in. We are going to add lavender essential oil and we are going to add tea tree essential oil as well. So folks, that's it. We're going to go ahead and get our oil um, through the sieve, through the strainer. We're going to get it strained. I was trying to think of that word that I needed. So we're going to put, and what I did with this jar is I've marked this as my... Um, this is my salve making jar, but I marked one cup, two cup, three cups, four cups. I just, you know, test it with water to see how much is one cup and I drew a line. So I know with the oil uh, putting in there what's one cup. So I'm going to go ahead and add one cup and we're going to use the strainer. I don't know. Can you see? Can you see? Here, we'll come back here so you can see me doing it. So we're just going to put the strainer over here and we'll drip a little bit, I'm sure, because I'm messy. And we're going to put it in the jar just like that. And using a wide mouth jar would probably be a little bit better, but this is the one I have for my salve making. And I made extra of this oil because I use it for soap, I use it for other salves. Um, and the nice thing about this salve too and why we don't add a lot of other essential oils that are known for their healing properties is I like to keep, uh, I like to keep this salve safe for babies and for kids. And so if you start adding hot oils like oregano, which has got really great um, antibacterial properties, you run into, that's called a hot oil, and a lot of times that reacts badly to kids and babies skin. And so we don't want to add any hot oils to this recipe. We want to keep this recipe so that we can use it on kids and on babies. So we've got the one cup. Yep, perfect. We've got the one cup of oil in there. So now we're going to put our four tablespoons of beeswax. And that oil wasn't very super hot. I uh, shut it off about an hour or two ago. And so it works better when the oil is a little bit warmer. So we might have to... Um, put this jar in the microwave and heat it up a little bit if that beeswax does not melt. So we're going to see here, we're going to give it a stir. So as you can see, you can see those little beeswax pastilles in there. And they're not melting super well because that oil just isn't very warm right now. So we're going to stick that in the microwave and get it a little warmer so it melts that beeswax. We don't want to get it too hot because honey, you don't want to add honey to anything too hot because it kills all the properties of the honey, all the good antibacterial properties. And now if you are worried about using honey topically on babies, uh, you are welcome to omit the honey. If you know that you have reactions to any of the plants or any of the things in this recipe, you are welcome to admit the, omit those things. Uh, you make this recipe work for you, especially with what herbs you infuse in your oil because that is completely up to you. Um, the ones I use are for soothing, antibacterial, antiviral. Uh, they beat infection, and so that's what I love about all of those herbs and plants that I add. So I'm just going to keep stirring this, and that beeswax is going to melt, which is so great. And you want to add the honey when you can touch the jar, and you're not going to burn yourself from it uh, when it's comfortable to touch, touch the jar. I can't talk today. So we're just going to keep melting down this beeswax. All right, all of those beeswax pastilles are melted down. There's absolutely no solids left in there. So we're going to start adding some of our other things. We're going to start with just a splash of neem oil. We shake that up real good. Just a bit. There we go. We're going to stir that up. Ooh, it doesn't smell so bad. I think I've gotten used to neem oil. If I can, if I can smell that and be like, ooh, it doesn't smell so bad. You know, I've gotten used to neem oil, but actually the chamomile in here is a really nice addition. Very, very nice addition. 
Oh, and that's what I'm really smelling is that camel. I'm smelling the plantain and the comfrey too. Oh, it smells amazing. So what we're going to do is we're going to let this cool down quite a bit because we don't want to add that honey until it's nice and cool. And we don't want to add our essential oils until it's nice and cool. It's a little warm to the touch still. And so I am going to stir this a bit and you probably don't need to hang around for that. Uh, but I'm going to stir this until it's just barely lukewarm. And then we're going to add the honey and the essential oils and we'll be done. Hey guys, I'm back and I am glad to say our oil beeswax mixture is now cool enough that we can add the honey and the essential oils and get this packaged. Now if you're looking for the recipe for this because I went too fast in the video, uh, you'll just have to watch the video again over and over again. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I will put the recipe in the description down below. And also, I will have it in our newsletter. If you want our monthly newsletter, you may go over to Patreon, our page Simple Hobby Homesteading over on Patreon, and get one of the tiers, subscribe to one of the tiers on that, and you get our monthly newsletter. So, and that will have this recipe in it as well. So we are going to add a tablespoon of this gorgeous honey. Here we go. Ooh, that just dollops right in. All right, I'm gonna wash my hands. All right, and we are going to stir that up. And it's starting to thicken up a bit, which is so good. And now you can, because this is not uh, water-based or milk-based or liquid-based, uh, this is oil-based, so you can keep this in your cupboard out of the fridge. Now, I like to keep mine in the fridge just because most of the time when I get my cuts and scrapes and rashes and whatnot is in the summer. And this feels amazing when it's cool putting on a cut or a scrape or anything like that. Uh, it feels so good if it's cool. So I highly recommend keeping it in the fridge just because it feels really, really good when you apply it. Now it is a little bit too thick in my opinion to put into a squeeze bottle because of that beeswax. Um, it's just a little bit too thick to put into a squeeze bottle. Now where can you get beeswax locally? Well you can get it at Hobby Lobby. You can get, I think you can get it at Michael's. You can get it at pretty much any health food store. Uh, Elbert's in El Evansville. Uh, I think Fresh Time does have beeswax somewhere. And oh these herbs. If you don't grow these plants or can't find these plants, uh, Fresh Time and Elbert's has loose botanicals that you can go and just get a Ziploc baggie uh, of a third of a cup of whatever you need of the botanicals to put in your infusion. So you can go and get that, which is really, really nice. Uh, that way you don't have to uh, find it anywhere or buy a huge bag or anything like that. You can just go and get a small amount, just enough you need for the recipe. Now lavender essential oil and tea tree essential oil, you only need five to 10 drops. I like to do 10 drops of lavender and then about uh, six or seven drops of tea tree. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be able to talk while I do because I can't count and talk at the same time. That's the lavender. And then we wanna put about seven drops of the tea tree. And these are both, uh, antibacterial, antiviral essential oils. There we go. I'll put, all right, and it's starting to thicken up beautifully. Now you can get as creative or as simple as you want with the storing of this. It can store in plastic, it can store in glass, whatever you'd like. Uh, your hobby stores, Hobby Lobby and Joanne Fabrics and Michaels, they have really cute jars and plastic containers that you can put this in if you want to gift it or if you want to make a bunch and give it to some friends or if you're selling this. Uh, if you're selling it, just look up your local laws uh, because I don't, in most states, I don't think you can label it as a healing salve because that labels it as medicinal. So I'm not a doctor. I don't claim to be a doctor. Now let me just make sure we've added everything we need to add. Uh, just to let you know, while we were waiting for this to cool down, I went ahead and I strained the rest of the oils. And so we've got our, um, our uh, botanicals here. And then we've got the oil. And you can see it's a beautiful dark green, which is so nice. All right, so now we are going to get all that we can off the spatula, the spatula. And we're going to pour it into these cute little plastic containers because I do sell this, so. And I give some away to friends, too. There we go, and we're just gonna fill it up. And it will be like a, a thick salve when all is said and done, when it cools down completely. 
and it often concaves in the middle a little bit, but there's really no way you can avoid that. You can't fill it any higher because it'll overflow. And there we go. As you can see, they're all filled up and oh, they look so pretty and they smell so good. So that got about five of the two ounce jars. These are just little two ounce jars. Uh, and they're about the size of like baby food containers. That's about what they are. So you can even use baby food containers if you want. So about two ounces. So it makes about two, four, six, eight, ten ounces. So this, this recipe makes about ten ounces of salve. There you go. All right, and this can be used, this recipe and this salve can be used for anything you would use Neosporin for. Um, cuts, scrapes, uh, you can even put on sunburn, athlete's foot you can put it on, uh, you can put it on burns, you can put it on um, like chap skin even. Uh, it's got a lot of really great properties. It is a little thick if you want to, uh, if you're putting it on a sunburn, use it uh, judiciously um, because it is a little oily. This is completely oil based and so I don't want you to be a, uh, an oiled up lobster or something like that. Uh, but it is perfect for cuts, it is perfect for burns, it is perfect for rashes. Uh, it's just really, really nice and it's completely all natural. So the recipe is going to be down here in the description. If you like what you saw today, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. And if you really like it and you want to start getting information from us each month, just sign up at Patreon for any one of the tiers and you will get a newsletter emailed to you every single month. It'll have all the recipes from the videos that month, a lot of the information from the videos. It'll have little animal information about the animals in the videos that month. So pretty much everything from the month will be in uh, written form so that way you can either print it out or just look at it whatever you want to do so it's really neat though so you guys have a great day remember do what you can with what you have wherever you are homesteading can happen anywhere with anyone so you guys have a great day we'll see you later bye bye And you want to add the honey when it is warm to the touch. Like, and you want to add the honey when it is warm. Uh, and you want to add the honey and oh. okay for the recipe uh, for this. Whoops, buddy, out. Oh.